What's up guys, Doug Polk here. And today we're gonna to talk about something very serious happening in the online poker world. Now I wasn't gonna make a video today. I'm planning on heading back to Vegas in a couple of days. But if you guys have been following on Twitter, a bunch of high stakes poker pros have been getting hacked. We've seen Vanessa Selps get hacked, Dan Smith get hacked, and Vanessa Russo all within the last 24, 48 hours. And I can also say that I know other people have been getting hacked too, but have just not come forward publicly. This video is going to be about what we know happened, how it happened, and then also I'm going to give you guys a rundown on how to keep yourself secure so you don't end up making a mistake that could cost you a lot of the money that you have in your online accounts. So let's start off by talking about the Vanessa Russo story. Now, I don't know as much about this one, but I did see what happened on Twitter. She originally tweeted a couple of days ago saying that she was in trouble and, and someone needed to call the police to help save her. Since that, the next day she came forward and said that she was swatted and that also she was hacked. So I'm not sure if that's related to what we're going to talk about today, but it's another case of someone getting hacked in the high stakes poker community. Not that Vanessa Russo is really involved in poker anymore, but you know, a poker player nonetheless. Next up, Dan Smith got hacked and this is through the method that we're going to go through in this video. But he tweeted out saying that some, some accounts got hacked last night and do not Western Union any money. Idiot hackers have tried, should have tried this before Scoop and Monaco, obviously indicating that he lost a bunch of money. It's a little joke on the getting hacked, but he did get hacked and lost some accounts, at least temporarily, nonetheless. He also tweeted out saying that he's in the process of curing his shit, and apparently Google Authenticator is better than having your phone as a backup, which is 100% true, but we're going to again talk about that a bit later in the How to Secure Yourself story. The final person that I know did get hacked was Vanessa Selfs, and I talked with her a little bit about what happened. She said that she got hacked yesterday. They go through your phone provider, convince them to get your pin changed, which is apparently super easy, and then get access to your phone. Then any anything you back up with text message, which many do for Gmail, is vulnerable. They got into her Gmail and all kinds of different things, but did not get access to her Bitcoin or anything like that because those accounts had 2FA that were not through text. So here is what's happening. Your phone provider, when you get your phone, has a SIM card. Now that SIM card is what gives your phone its identity or gives it its number. Now what hackers are doing is they're calling phone carriers and imitating to be certain people. They say they lost their phone and they have a new card and you know, they, they want to put, put that SIM card or put the SIM card they had before onto their new phone. Now what carriers should be doing is when they can't give a pin to get into the account, they should not allow them to change anything. But the problem is the phone carriers are really lax on this stuff, probably because mainly people lose their pins, don't remember them. And so they're so tired of that and worn down that they don't you know, have good security, but they eventually give this person imitating you, your, your SIM card. So now they can have, they have your phone number. They can call or text whoever with your phone. And as you can think about a lot of accounts online, they do verification through SMS. So let's say that, you know, I lost my password to some account and I wanted to have it recovered. Well, they can say, okay, we're texting your, your phone number with, you know, the verification code to reset your password and all this stuff. Well, if it sends to your phone, but they have your phone, they can reset the account and you can see how they can get into a lot of accounts. Now that does not mean that they can immediately get into your account. They still probably are gonna have to have your password unless there's some way to reset your password only through the 2FA, which would be weird. I don't think anyone allows that, but let's just say someone did have your password or they were able to reset things or have information from your phone sent to the new phone, then using your Google Drive, using your Dropbox, using that stuff, they can download it and have that information to log in across the board. Now, the thing about this is if you if you set yourself up correctly, you will not lose to this hack even though your phone is vulnerable. Here's the thing that really I think you all need to come to terms with, especially in the high stakes poker community. Your phone is not safe. And I know that doesn't feel right. It's your phone. They shouldn't be able to get your numbers. This is an outrage. And look, I hope the carriers fix this problem because the fact that they allow someone to just call up, imitate you, like what happened to Vanessa Selbst here was she had her number hijacked, called Verizon, told them it was hijacked, had it changed back to her phone number, told them do not change the pin no matter what. And then someone again called in and tried to hack the same phone number to once again get her information. So these phone, these carriers are not protecting your phone number. So we know what happened and how they did it, but how can you protect yourself? 
And I'm going to give you a few different steps here that will secure your accounts as, as much as you possibly can. Obviously on the internet, there will always be inherent danger of people trying to hack your account, especially when you become more high profile. The first step is do your best to secure your phone. Now, what you should realize is your phone is never safe. I think that from this video, if nothing else, you will have realized that, but do your best to still secure it. Call your carrier, set up a pin and tell them unless they have the pin number and you are in person with photo ID, do not make changes on the account. Now, some carriers have different policies. I'm not sure exactly what all of them can do. They're going to generally be weak. What you should do after that is then try to call in and pretend to be yourself to, you know, for your phone line and see if you can change your own phone number without really the information that they should have to have to do it. If you can, that means that your carrier is not safe with your information and you should definitely, definitely not think that your phone is a secure way to, you know, verify who you are. Now, once you've done that step, regardless of the outcome, you should now take your own security or your security into your own hands. First off, if you have any account that can have two factor authentication, use it. Okay. I know that sounds silly and I'm sure 80 or 90% of you'd use it, but Google or Gmail, any account, any account you can have online, if you can have two factor authentic authentication, use it because if you do that, it's going to make it much harder for people to hack you. After that, do not use SMS, M SMS text unless it is the only option. And if it is the only option, realize there's some chance that account could get hacked. Also, do not use the application Authy. It links back to your phone number so that, you know, if you lost your phone, you could get your codes back. But that's not good here because if someone pretends they lost your phone and got your 2FAs, they could get into your account theoretically, and we want to prevent that. So what I would recommend using is Google Authenticator. Now, Google Authenticator is a lot more annoying because if you lose your phone, yes, your codes are gone. But when you put your codes into your phone, you get recovery seeds. So if you do lose your phone, you can input it and get your code back, write those down and put them in a safe place. In doing so, you now are protecting yourself against getting hacked. Look, I know it's annoying if you lose your phone. Okay. I understand that I've lost more than my fair share of phones, but if you do it like this, then you can't, you're not vulnerable to this type of type of hack. Next up, I definitely recommend getting key pass. It's a, password manager program where you can have all of your passwords stored. And the reason that it's so great is that you can have lots of longer, um, you know, 20 character passwords or whatever you want. And they're all stored in the, in the, inside the program so that you have different passwords for different websites. If one site gets hacked and you have the same password used on 10, 20, 30 sites, well, now someone has access to your password on all of those sites by having different ones for different sites, you protect yourself. Now you can also decide how important a site is. If it's just some random trolley site that you don't really care much about, it's fine. But any site that has something to do with money or, you know, really representing you publicly like social media accounts, you should have different long passwords saved in your key pass in order to protect your account. Now it's obviously not foolproof. If someone gets a, a hold of your key pass, that's really bad, but you have a master password that you use to log into it. You should write it down somewhere and also put it somewhere safe so that you are the only person with ac the access to that key pass file. I want to finally talk about if you have cryptocurrency. Now, one of the reasons why I think hackers are getting more and more aggressive is that cryptocurrency is like the gold mine for hackers. Digital currency that's sent online without your name attached to it, pretty much a hacker's dream. If you have cryptocurrency, you need to get something that can store it in a cold wallet. I would suggest something like Trezor. I have one for my crypto. The way that it works is you, you keep your coins on the Trezor, but in order for you to be able to send them, you have to confirm both on the Trezor with a pin and you know in your browser on your wallet. So that way, if you lose your treasure, you have a recovery so you can get the coins back. And if someone has your tre treasure, they don't have the pin. It's basically a completely safe way to transfer your coins online. If you guys are interested in it, I'll put a link below. Uh, obviously I'm not an affiliate for treasure. I just think that they're a really good product and I would recommend it if you want to try and keep your coins safe. If you have a lot of cryptocurrency and I know a lot of you do because the market has been going crazy lately, be careful with it, put it in safe places, have a treasure. Make sure you have, you know, uh, uh, the, the max digit pin, make sure you're doing everything within your power to make sure your account is safe. Now, what I would do with your treasure recovery seed, and I know this is getting really nitty gritty, but I'm trying to help you guys out. 
the treasure recovery seed will get you your coins back in the case you lose your treasure. I would write all of them down, break the sheet in half, put half of it somewhere safe at your house or wherever, and half in a security deposit box. So that way, if anyone ever does get your treasure or half of your recovery seed, they will never be able to get both parts of it so you can always get your coins back. Okay, that was long-winded, but I hope you guys understand how important this is. There's a lot of money that's being hacked right now. A lot of people are becoming targets. Your phone is not safe, okay? So use Google Authenticator and make sure at the end of the day, you do everything within your power to prevent this because I do not think this will be the last we'll see of high stakes poker players getting hacked, but you need to make sure that you do the best to secure your money. All right, thank you for joining me. Not a super uplifting video today, but I wanted to try and get the word out because I feel I have an obligation to do that. And I hope this can help some people protect their accounts and keep their money safe. I actually have one last piece of advice before I go. I'd strongly recommend setting up a Google voice number. Now what you can do is you get a number from Google that redirects to your phone. For all of the different accounts you wanna keep safe, use your Google voice number, not your phone number. That way they can never get access if the, if the phone number is associated with the account, they can never get access through Google Voice because you can't call up Google and have them change the pin. So look into Google Voice, set up a number and use that for important accounts to also help prevent yourself from getting hacked. Oh yeah, and two last things. We finally hit 100K subs guys, getting that silver play button. And also I'm gonna be doing some vlogging this summer at the World Series of Poker. We'll see what happens, should be fun. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. This could be it guys, this could be it. Oh, there they go, oh, Corey oh, Roberts! Oh my God. No one has ever done that. No one has ever done that. I fucking beast high stakes. I beast everything I play. This is beyond fairy tale. It's inconceivable.